So let's have a look at the problem. Let's flip over to PixInsight and uh, have a quick look at it. Okay, so here we have an image. This, and I'm just gonna do an auto stretch on it. And this is M101. This is actually a, a student data. Uh, Robert Bean uh, took this data and uh, we were working on it together, um, showing him how to use PixInsight. But one of the problems that was occurring, he said, was that the image would get blown out when he applied the auto stretch and he wasn't sure what was happening. So um, as I said, I did some investigating on it and, and looked at the workflows and so forth. And I actually had experienced this myself and never really gave it much thought because sometimes I manually stretch the image using the uh, the histogram transformation tool, I can manually stretch the image. So in that case, it doesn't actually have any effect. But if you apply um, an auto STF to it, uh, or if you use Bill Blanchon's uh, auto stretch, um, the same problem can, ha can happen uh, as well. So what is the problem? Well, the problem lies with the order of uh, processes that you're doing uh, initially with regards to the, uh, the image processing. And what I mean by that is specifically, so I'll start with a crop. I'll crop the image, of course. Um, I'll do a DBE on it. Uh, color image, I'll do the SPCC for color calibration. I'll then apply BXT. Now, this is the point where things can actually become a problem. And I'm going to demonstrate it to you. So the next thing that I would do would be to, and, and this is a linear image. Um, I should actually put it back to a linear image. So we have that. So we're still in a linear image state. And if I go to noise reduction, noise exterminator, a lot of people are using noise exterminator. And if I, I'll just do an auto stretch on this so we can see what we're looking at. If I apply noise exterminator to this image now in my workflow, and we'll let noise exterminator finish, which it did there. Okay, so it finished. Now, if I turn off the auto stretch, I'm at a point now where I wanna stretch the image. If I use the, uh, the screen transfer function, you see what happens. It gets really crazy looking, it, it's completely messed up. And this also holds true if I use something like Bill Blanchin's pixel math stretching methods. It also creates an image that doesn't look very good. So, it's not as bad as using the screen transfer function, but it still isn't isn't good. We can get a better stretch than that if we did it manually. Now, that being said, what I discovered was that uh, it, it was actually noise exterminator that was creating the situation. Not that noise exterminator is a problem. It's not that noise exterminator isn't the problem. It simply does, as my friend Ron Breacher said, it does such a good job at noise reduction that it messes with the algorithm for the screen transfer function and it causes your images to get blown out looking or really messed up looking. So the key to fixing this is there's two ways you can handle this. I've actually done this in both ways and I don't have any issues either way. You can apply a stretch before you do the noise reduction, in which case you'll avoid this problem. So if we do the auto stretch, First, we get a nice stretch. You can see it looks good. And then we can apply noise exterminator. And we won't have any problems with the image as we can see. Noise exterminator worked and so did the stretch. So let's just go back to here. And so there's my auto stretch just to see what we're looking at. The other way that you can do it is you can, I should turn that back on. The other way you can do it is to apply the noise reduction first before you stretch. And there it is, it's applied. And then do a manual stretch instead of using the screen transfer function. So in this case here, we can just do a nice stretch. We can use this. We can do. We can use the histogram transformation tool. Uh, we can use the. I just turn off the auto stretch on that. We can use the uh, uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch. Uh, whatever you prefer for a manual stretch. Uh, I'm just using the histogram tool just to demonstrate this. It works effectively. And uh, there, I'll just leave it at that for this demonstration purpose. But there we go. We don't have any issues with the image being blown out or getting messed up.
So the question is, where do you apply noise exterminator? And that's a personal choice in your workflow, how you want to do it. I've applied it to linear images. I've applied it to nonlinear images. I haven't had any issues with applying it to new, uh, an image that is nonlinear, that's stretched uh, myself. And uh, so I actually prefer to stretch my image first and then apply noise reduction, the noise exterminator to it. And again, I, I want to point out, I really want to hit this home that the problem is not noise exterminator. Noise exterminator is just, like I said, doing such a great job at what it does that it's confusing, we'll say, or messing up the algorithm that's being used for doing these auto stretches. And it's making dark areas much brighter than they, they should be. It's It just doesn't look right. So um, you can either apply noise reduction after you stretch the image or you can apply it before you stretch the image and then do a manual stretch. Use the histogram transformation tool or use the generalized hyperbolic stretch or the arc sync stretch, whatever you like to use for stretching. That would be the, uh, that would be the solution to this problem. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. And for those of you that did watch to the very end, maybe in the comments there to let me know that you did watch to the very end, you could give me a woot woot in the uh, comments and uh, we'll see how many people uh, did watch to the very end here. And uh, that's it for this video. So thanks very much for tuning in and we'll see you again real soon. Take care for now and clear skies. <laughs>